Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right, everybody. Thanks again. This is Jamie McDonald with the Game Agency. I'm really excited to have everybody here today on the webinar. Um, if some of you were at DevLearn a couple weeks ago, we're going to be reviewing some of the things that we talked about there. And anyone who wasn't there, um, some of this may be new to you. But um, again, Jamie McDonald, I'm the VP of Business Development of the Game Agency. Um, we're really excited to share the Training Arcade with you. It's a game authoring tool that lets you build your own games for training and education really fast with your own learning content. Um, I, uh, you know, one of the best things about games is that they're really one of the great ways to break through to your audience. It helps you create an emotional connection with them, but really important is that it's reinforcing both hard and soft skills. Um, and the games can be used for e-learning or instructor-led. They're all web-based games in the training arcade, so they work really nice on every device, including your small mobile phones. Um, and they are all fully responsive, so they'll shrink down nicely to, um, you know, to, to look nicely on the small devices as well. So today we're gonna focus on Jeopardy. Jeopardy is one of the eight games available in the Training Arcade platform. Um, we're also gonna talk about some of the other games in there. There's a total of eight games. One in particular that I love is Scenarios, which is a really great game for uh, you know, branching dialogue, putting people into real life situations where they need to make decisions, objection handling, soft skills training, et cetera. We have other games as well, uh, like Jump, Match, Trivia, Recall, Scramble, and Sort It. So we're gonna go into those in a little while, but for starters, I really wanted to focus on Jeopardy. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, we have two modes for our Jeopardy game. The first mode is a single player mode, which can be used uh, you know, through e-learning, through your LMS, or you know, really at any point um, by an individual player. But the other mode is instructor mode, and that's the one we're gonna focus on at the beginning of this webinar. And this is really great for running a game in a live setting, similar to the real game show with Alex Trebek that everybody knows and loves. Um, it's, a, it's a great way for you to have a hosted version where you are um, you know, having it be a multiplayer experience. Folks are looking up at the big board, which I'll show you in a minute, but they're actually answering on their own devices. So it makes it a, you know, a much more engaging experience with you know, turning it from a, what could be a passive meeting into an active one with tons of audience participation. And for those of you who don't know, um, the game agency is the only company that has the official license to the Jeopardy brand for training games. And really the reason why we went after this license from Sony and Jeopardy Productions is because, you know, for years talking to companies where we knew that, they, you know, there's dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of companies making knockoff Jeopardy games in PowerPoint and so forth. While they may be fun, they take hours to build and there's no analytics. So um, you'll see if this is the first time you're you know, looking at our Jeopardy game, you'll see that we really built the game to be very authentic. It has the same look and feel as the real game show. It even has the voiceover of Johnny Gilbert who also does the voiceover for the Jeopardy TV show. Um, so if some of you were at DevLearn a couple weeks ago, you may have seen one of the presentations given by Stephen Baer or Richard Lowenthal, two of our managing partners, um, where they actually played a live instructor-led Jeopardy game. We also hosted a couple versions of it in our booth, but we're gonna go ahead and do that today. So, um, you know, what, what we really want to achieve for today is to, to make you realize how easy it is for you to host a real Jeopardy game using, um, you know, the controls within our platform and then have everybody answer on their own devices. So if you saw in the chat, um, I posted the link to the game. So what I'd like you to do if you can is go ahead and take out a second device if you have one with you. So you could either um, be watching my screen share on your computer and open up a separate tab on your computer to play, or better yet, if you have a mobile phone with you, type the, the link learn it live, sorry, learn it dot live forward slash THX into your computer. And we're gonna get going on, um, on playing this game together. And by the way, the winner of this is going to win a $25 Visa gift card. So let's get ready to play. All right, so what you guys are looking at on my screen or you have been is the, um, you know, the, the live Jeopardy game that we're about to play. And by the way, this is all, um, we decided to make this game about Thanksgiving since Thanksgiving's coming up. So we're gonna test your Thanksgiving knowledge here. So I'm gonna flip over to the instructor panel and what everybody should be able to see right now is the back end of the training arcade platform. And I'll just give you a quick overview of what we're looking at here. So on the left side, 
we've got a navigation panel. It's got your analytics, your leaderboard, and all your instructor controls. And then down here is where you would look at the games you build if you had an account. You can build a new game and you can toggle through a variety of other tools. Um, in the instructor panel, we, that's where you go to, um, to you know, start hosting a game that's already built. And right over here is where the game link would be that you would send out to the audience. So for purposes of making things easy for everyone on the phone today, we used a bit.ly link so that it was easier for you to type in. And I'm just gonna quickly check in the chat here because I see some people are asking questions. I don't know, Stephen or Jen, um, okay, you got it. Okay, sorry guys. I'm gonna let Stephen and, and Jen go ahead and answer those. All right, so um, what you would do if you were hosting this event, the goal is that you're gonna have everybody kind of look up at the big screen. So let's pretend you're in a live meeting and you know, you've got people either sitting in chairs or they're, you know, they're sitting at tables. You want them to focus up on the big screen. So what they would be doing is they would really be looking at this screen, which I haven't started the game yet, so that's why you're seeing this, but the game board will pop up shortly. But in the back end of the instructor controls, you're gonna see this. So I'm gonna go ahead and initiate the game. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna prompt you to have a start button show up on your device that you're playing on. And, this, and I want everyone who's playing to go ahead and register. And as soon as you're registered, you'll see that I'm actually, as the instructor, going to be able to see who's registering. It's gonna take a minute to populate, and I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of time to go ahead. So we see Stevie B is the number one so far registered. It looks like we've got quite a few participants on, so I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of extra time to make sure that everybody has enough time to register here. Okay, it's like we've got over 20 people registered. Give you guys a little bit more time. Now we're in the 30s. I don't wanna start until everyone's gotten a chance to register so that you can all compete. So another 30 seconds. And you'll see that if I toggle all the way to screen two, screen three, screen four, the last person to register so far is Mika. We've got about 39. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, wait, 41. I'm gonna go ahead and get started, guys. All right, so we've got a lot of people registered. Thank you for doing that, we're excited to play. And now I'm gonna start the game. And so just so you know, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to toggle back and forth on my computer between showing you the back end controls here and showing you what actually is gonna appear on the big screen. So this is the screen that you guys would normally be looking at. Ready, I'm gonna start the game. And you'll see that the nice Jeopardy board's coming up and then the game board's gonna appear. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to toggle back here and I'm gonna to go to uh, Nancy. I know Stevie B is actually part of the game agency. So sorry, Steve, we're gonna skip you. Nancy, why don't you, in the chat, go ahead and pick a category for me. Or does someone else wanna pick one? All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and pick one for you guys. Oh wait, maybe she chatted, hang on guys. All right, turkey talk. Okay, so why don't we do turkey talk for 200? Since I can't actually hear you guys, I'll just pick them. So I'm gonna go back to my control panel here and I'm gonna click Turkey Talk for 200. Now look at that, the daily double popped up. So in the round of Jeopardy, there's one daily double that randomly appears and in Double Jeopardy two appears. So why don't you guys all go ahead on your own devices and wager however much you wanna wager. And then I'm gonna go on ahead and I'm gonna click Hide Wager to bring up the first question. And the first question happens to be an image which will then pop into a question. So we have the ability for you to load both images and videos into the game. So the first question is about blank million turkeys are cooked for Thanksgiving each year. So you guys aren't gonna be able to do anything until I actually click show correct. And you'll see that the correct answer there was 46. So now the cool thing about this is that, I'm gonna click back to board. At any, every time a question's asked, 
it'll populate down here. And then if I click on this plus section here, it'll, oh, you know what, guys, I apologize. I think I, I clicked um, show correct before anyone got a chance to answer. So let's skip that for a second. I'm gonna go to the next one and give you guys more time. So let's click on American Trivia for 200. President George H.W. Bush pardoned the first turkey in 1989 in Washington, D.C. So is this a true or false question? I'm gonna give you guys a second to answer. And as an instructor, you'd actually be able to see the countdown timer counting down and you can decide when it's your time to show the right answer. So now I'm gonna go ahead and click show correct and that's gonna pop up. Oops, the correct answer was true. So now, as I said before, you can go down and see how people answer. Let's skip this one because I did that wrong. Okay, so the, let's see, we got, all right. So now the cool thing about this is you can actually see how each person answered and whether they got it right or wrong. Some of the incorrect ones here showing an X is probably because they didn't get a chance to answer before I clicked answer. But let's see, Sam got it right the fastest. So Sam, congratulations, but since you can't, since I can't hear you, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and continue to pick the questions on the board. So now let's do tri American Trivia for 400. We've got a nice visual clue showing up here. Okay, now I'm gonna click show answers. And on your screen is the question, which item was not featured in the first Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in 1924 in New York City? So again, remember this is which one was not featured in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade? Give everyone a second to answer. I'm going to go ahead now and click show correct. All right, so the correct answer was balloons. They did have puppets, singers, celebrities, Santa Claus, and animals. I'm going to go back to the board and I'm going to see how fast everyone answered those. All right, Sam answered balloons. And the cool thing about this is not only can you see what people answered if they had a chance to answer on time, but you can also see exactly what they selected. So Sam, I see you picked balloons. You got it the right fastest in five seconds. So now let's go back to the board again. And I'm gonna pick, uh, how about food for 600? So blank were not eaten at the first Thanksgiving meal, but onions, lettuce, and beans were. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead back to the controls and click show answers. And now on your device, you should be able to go ahead and type this in. Now, one thing I wanna tell you about Jeopardy is there's two types of questions that you can build when you're building a Jeopardy game. One is multiple choice, and then the other one is really similar to what the real game show is all about, which is text input. So you have the ability to type in your question, and you can type in as you're building this 10 possible correct answers. So as long as somebody picks one of the 10 possible choices, they will get it right. So now let's go back here and I'm gonna click on show correct. So, oop, I spelled that wrong guys, sorry, that should be baked potatoes. So the answer was potato, potatoes, baked potatoes, mashed potatoes, some form of potatoes. So let's go back to the board. So as long as you put something, some form of potatoes in there, we'll see what we got. All right, did not get any, here we go. All right, so we've got Isabeau for potatoes, nine seconds fast, Isabeau, congratulations, you got that the fastest. So let's go back to the board. Now what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna show the leaderboard. And so this is gonna pop up. One second. It's gonna show you, all right, so Isabeau's in the lead, Vasella, Sam, Robin, David, Daniel, Robin, A, Barry, and Michael. All right, so you guys are in the top right now. Now if you, I apologize if you didn't get a chance because I, I went too fast to answer questions, then you won't be shown on the top 10 of the leaderboard right now. Or if you got your questions wrong so far, obviously you're in the negative. Let's go back here. I'm gonna dismiss the leaderboard. And by the way, you guys, I apologize if some of you are having some delays. It's possibly a Wi-Fi issue, um, you know, at, at, in, either in your area. Um, this game can be played with, you know, consecutively with thousands of people. So apologies if anyone's having some delays. Let's keep going. I'm gonna go food for 400. The visual clue here is a beautiful Thanksgiving dinner. And now back on my control panel, I'm gonna click show answers. So the question is, studies suggest that the carbohydrates in sides and desserts at a Thanksgiving meal increase tryptophan, the amino acid that causes drowsiness to enter the brain. 
So is this a true or false question? I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a second to answer. And then I'm gonna click show correct in one second. All right, the correct answer was true. All right, let's go back to the board and let's scroll back down here to see how everybody did on the last one. All right, so Robin, you got it right the fastest at six seconds, congratulations. Let's go back to the board now. All right, we're gonna go to Turkey Talk for 400, another visual clue. And by the way, you don't have to put visual clues in, but if you choose to, you can do an image or a video. We've got the big turkey. Now the question is, according to the book of Guinness World Records, the heaviest turkey on record weighed in at blank pounds. So let's give everyone a second to answer that question. And then I'm gonna go ahead and show the correct answer now. Correct answer was 86 pounds. So the average size of a turkey is actually 15. So 86 pounds is pretty big. All right, so let's go back to the board. And let's show the leaderboard again. See who's doing well here. Let's see if Isabeau is still on the top of the leaderboard. You are, Isabeau, good job. Nice work, all right. Let's dismiss the leaderboard. Let's actually go back to the question down here and see how everyone answered. So Robin, with the fastest speed again, way to go. Okay. Couple more here, food for 200. The main food that colonists and Native Americans ate at their Thanksgiving meal. Okay, here are your choices. Go ahead and answer on your device. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show the correct answer. I think a lot of you will be surprised that the correct answer was actually fish, seal, swan, and venison. All right, back to the board. Let's see who got that right, I'm curious. Anybody, it's a hard question. Deneen, way to go in two seconds flat. Okay, American trivia for 600. Ooh, this is a good one. Name a state that has a city in it called Turkey. So the word Turkey has to be in the name of the city, but name the state. And you can either abbreviate or you can type out the name. All right, give you guys another second to answer. And now I'm gonna show the correct. So the correct answer was either North Carolina Texas or Louisiana? All right, let's go back to the board. Now let's show the lead board. I'm curious how everybody's doing. All right, oh, Isabel is still in the lead, but you have lost points as well as everybody else. So I have a feeling that some of the last couple questions were hard guys. So let's go back here. I'm gonna dismiss the leaderboard. And we're gonna go to the last question in Jeopardy. Now, just so you guys know, I disabled the double Jeopardy round for the sake of making this a shorter game experience. You can have a board that's a three by three like this, or you can even make your board as big as a five by five. So if you did a Jeopardy round at 25 questions, a double Jeopardy at 25 questions, and a final Jeopardy question at one question, that's 51 questions. Or if you disable Jeopardy and you made the board only a three by three, you can make the game as small as a 10 question, which I did here. So let's go to the last one, Turkey Talk for 600. The Butterball Turkey Talk line answered this many calls each Thanksgiving season. So was it 100,000 calls, 500,000, 775,000, or 1.15 million calls? Everyone go answer. Give you guys a second. And you can see here as the instructor, I, these little red marks are showing that the timer is counting down. So I could either wait to the full minute or for sake of time, I can just go ahead. So I'm gonna click show correct. Correct answer was 100,000. Well, you guys, if you got that right, you really know your butterballs. All right, so I'm gonna click back to the board here. And what's gonna happen now is we have made it into the final Jeopardy round. So anybody who had a positive amount of money in their account 
after hitting the Jeopardy round, you will be able to wager points right now. If you did not have any, I apologize, but you can't wager points. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys one more second to wager, whoever can. And then I'm gonna click hide wager, which is gonna bring up the question. So the first question is, or the, the last question is, what is the most popular pie eaten at Thanksgiving? So I'm gonna click show answers and you guys can choose, is it pecan, apple, pumpkin, or strawberry rhubarb? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show correct answer. The answer was apple. And that would be the end of the game, but first we're gonna, of course, show the leaderboard. Isabeau. Oh, wow, look at that. Isabeau, you won with negative 200 points. So perhaps some of these questions were hard. Obviously, the content we put in here was, you know, fun little trivia about Thanksgiving, but you can use uh, the Jeopardy game to help your learners you know, with their knowledge retention across any kind of learning content and of course, you know, in any kind of learning environment. So Isabeau, we will be reaching out to you after the webinar with a $25 Visa gift card. All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, if there's anybody who ever wants to, um, you know, set up a demo with me or someone else on our team to walk you through this in more detail, we would love to do that. Another thing that we can do is, or that, that you guys can do is, um, I'm just switching back over here to the Training Arcade website. Um, if you go to the website and you click on Try It Free, you're all more than welcome to set up a free trial of the platform. You can build out some sample games. You can test a SCORM package in your LMS after you've built the games um, and really just get a good idea of, of how easy the tool really is to build the games. So now that we've done that, I'm going to skip over to how we built that game. So back here, in the back end of the training arcade, I'm gonna click over to games. And you'll see that in the game section, this is our platform, so there's tons of different games in here. But if you want, you can search by game type if you're trying to find a game, or you can search by game name. This one happened to be Thanksgiving. So I'm gonna click on that, and now I'm in the back end. And what I'm gonna quickly do is just show you um, the two parts that it takes to build a game. We're, since this one's already done, we don't have to go through too much, but there's the game info section, which is really setting up the basic information about a game. And then there's the questions, which is where you go ahead and add in your content. So in this particular case, we had a, um, a Jeopardy game. We chose to make it instructor led, but if you didn't want it to be, if you wanted it to be a single player experience, you would set it at standard. You then name your game and whatever you name it will automatically populate into the game URL. And then down here is where you have some great settings. So you can choose to put a default timer of maybe 60 seconds in each question. Later, you can adjust that. You can also decide if you wanna require a pass fail. Um, you can, if you wanted to, add a learn more button or even uh, some other URL that you send people to when the game is over, which will appear on the game over screen. We didn't do that in this case, but it could be like, you know, take a survey or learn more and drive them out to some other piece of learning content that you want. This is where you can put in some informational pop-up, you know, a little message about what's about to happen in the game, like I did here, let's see how well you do, et cetera. And then down here is where you decide on, on user registration. So as you guys all know, if you played the game, we asked for your first name, your last name, your email, and we put in a custom field, which was your company. You can put in as many custom fields as you want. So if you wanted to um, you know, create a competition where people aren't just registering as themselves, but they're registering as a team or a group, or maybe if they're at a live event, they're at a table, so they register with their table number. Or if you do something virtually, you can have them register by city or region or department, anything you want. And that way, when you're looking at the analytics, which I'll show you in a minute, and at the leaderboard, you can look at it from both an individual and a group perspective. You can also turn the leaderboard on or off on the game over screen so people can see how they did. And in the Jeopardy game, you can also load a logo in here. Jeopardy is the only game that you can't customize beyond adding a logo, but our other games, you actually can do some customization either on the splash screen or we can do some custom skins for you. So let's pop into the question section. So under questions, as I mentioned, there were three rounds. In this particular game, we decided to disable double Jeopardy, but if you didn't want it disabled, you can just click this and it'll re-enable the category. So let's go into to Jeopardy now. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, you can decide how many categories you want for each round. We only had three in this game, but you can make it as big as five. And if you wanted to add additional categories, you just go over here. You would go in here to name your category. So for instance, it says American Trivia. If I wanted to change that, I can just edit that real quick. 
My next category was turkey talk. My next category is food. And then you can click in the question. And you'll see here, this is where you get to decide which question type you want. So for this particular question, we had a multiple choice, but you could do a text input. Once you make your decision, you can also load in an image or a video like we had in some of our, our questions. Then you type in your question here. And by the way, it also tells you in these little, um, little pop-up question bubbles that you, you know, what the character limitations are. Um, you can adjust your timer if you want. And then here you can use your opening phrase, what is, who is, what are, et cetera. And then down here, you can put in your possible choices. And if I wanted to, I can add in you know, up to four different choices. You click on which one's correct. You can also choose to randomize your choices or not. So if you didn't need them to appear in a certain order, you can randomize it. And then down here is where you add in your feedback. So correct or incorrect feedback. So um, it's really as simple as that. When you're done, you just click save. When you're building the Jeopardy game, um, if you can do it all in one sitting, you can click save at the end. My recommendation though is to click save draft as you're going. And that way you can kind of, you know, build it out in little pieces, test it as you're going, and you don't have to actually finish the entire game experience, you know, while you're building it. When you're done with that, you would just go into the next question. And again, you would choose which question type you want, whether you want an image on it or not, and you follow the same process that we did for the last one, and so forth. You just go down the line. So that's how you build a Jeopardy game. Um, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to show you, before I get into the other games in the platform, I'm going to show you a few things regarding how you publish a game. So publishing a game is giving you the opportunity to get the games out to your audience in a variety of different ways. So let's say you use an LMS. We have either SCORM 2004 or SCORM 1.2 that you can download and then load the game into your LMS. Um, if you wanted to embed the game into a course, so let's say you're building a course in, with one of the you know, more popular e-learning authoring tools like Tora, Captivate, et cetera, you can go ahead and just take that link and embed it as a web object in the course. Um, you can also use an embed code to iframe the game into a, you know, a website or anywhere that HTML is supported. And then the really easy ways are to take that game link and you can email it out to your audience. You can, um, you can text it to them if you want. If you're doing something at a live event, you can post the link up on the big board um, and you can just ask people to take out their device and type it in. Or if you were doing something virtually like we're doing here, you can post the link in the chat of your WebEx or whatever, or Zoom or whatever tool that you use. So those are a lot of fun different ways that you can publish out your games. What I'm gonna do now is switch over to analytics. So this is where all the fun starts, fun stuff goes. So I'm gonna just flip down to one that I know has some really great data in it because these are some test games. All right, all right, so now that we're in the, we're in the data. So again, when you log in as a user, you're going to look at your nav panel and up here on the top is your analytics. So right now you'd be able to go into here and kind of scroll through which game you want to see the analytics for. Today we're going to show you tax trivia. So in tax trivia, um, there, well in any of the games, there are two views to looking at data. One is the player stats, which is going to show you how each individual person played. And then the other one is your question stats. So this is going to show you the aggregate data. So you'll see here, this was a tough game because it happened to be about taxes. But you'll see here that in this particular question, for everybody that played, 59% of them got this question wrong. So when you're running a live meeting or you're having your learners play games, all the data within our, our back end is real time. And the beauty of that is that you would know immediately whether the, you know, the, 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 the training that you're doing is working. So let's just say you run a training meeting and then you tell everybody, all right, great, we just spent an hour learning about this, we played a game, go take a coffee break. And while they're gone for five minutes, you can take a look at this data and really understand where the gaps in the learning are. So when people come back in, you can make sure to go over what they missed. But interestingly, you'll see that as people continue to play this game, there was a really great improvement in knowledge. And I'm gonna show you another example of that up here. So right here, we've got Mo. Mo played seven sessions. I can click into Mo as an individual and I can see how many times, um, how many uh, sessions they played and how, how often, but I can also click on questions. And this will show you how Mo answered the first time around, second time around, and third time around. And you'll see that the first time he or she did not do so well, second time a little bit better, but by the third time you see that there's really some progress made on the knowledge retention. And interestingly, we ran a study of a thousand games in the training arcade, and we found that there was a 64% increase in knowledge retention from the first time someone played a game to the third time. So, you know, 
The games really do provide that replayability factor. They allow people to fail safely if they don't do so well. And at the end, they see that they didn't really, you know, get high enough up on the leaderboard. Hopefully they're going to be encouraged to play again. So this is really giving you a good indication that people are learning as they go. So I'm going to go in. Oh, and by the way, if you export this data out as a CSV file, it won't, it, it will not only tell you whether they got it right or wrong, but it'll actually show you exactly what they uh, chose as their answers. And it'll show you all the sessions they played and the progression and how they started to do better. So it really gives you some good behavioral trends as well. You can also custom date range. So if you're looking at data and you want to see, you know, a particular day or a month or year, et cetera, you can do that. Um, now I'm going to quickly move to a game that has some group data in it. So in this particular game, um, we ask the users to register with their first name, last name, employee ID, city, department, and district. And what's great is that you can look at it from an individual perspective, but if you also wanted to roll the data up, you can. So let's say I actually only want to see the people in the South, you can roll it up that way. And it'll give you all the information on the people who are just in the South. Um, again, when you export the data, all of this will appear in your spreadsheet so you can also do whatever kind of data sorting that you need. Now I'm gonna switch over to the leaderboard for a second. The leaderboard really brings in the ability for you to drive that friendly competition. Um, some cool things that I'm gonna show you here are that you can, in this little uh, three dots, you can go ahead and, and move to full screen if you didn't wanna have you know, some of the, the um, stuff on the outer side. Um, you can also click right, live refresh. And if you see this green button appear, what that will do is in a live session, it will update the leaderboard every second. So you don't need the instructor or whoever is facilitating the meeting to you know, constantly have to refresh the page. Um, another thing that you can do is you can click hide all entries. So the purpose of this would be, let's say you had a game living in your LMS and you had lots of people play, but you also wanted to use that same game in the middle of a live learning session and you only wanted the people in the meeting to have uh, you know, their information populate the leaderboard. You can go ahead and do that, and so it'll just show the information from the new people. And then if you ever wanted to go ahead and bring back those hidden entries, you can just restore them here. But what I wanna show you is that in this case, you'll see that it has their first name, last name, and all their little details here. But if I took it from no grouping to say just city, it's gonna roll up that information. So you'll see just the people in DC, for instance, their average score, cumulative score, high score, and then if I want, I can click into here. Now this one only had one person in DC, but if it had more, you'd be able to look at just the DC people that way. And again, the leaderboard is also exportable as a CSV file. So I'm now going to switch gears a little bit, you guys, over to the Training Arcade platform, and I'm gonna go over to games. So as I mentioned in the beginning, we have eight different games in our platform, and the games in this, are really meant to be a knowledge retention tool. Um, with the exception of one game, which I'm just gonna skip to right now, which is our Scenarios game. So Scenarios is great for knowledge retention, but Scenarios is also a great game that you can use for the actual learning. Um, this is a game that is branching. Um, it's really great, as I mentioned before, for situational learning, objection handling, putting people into real life situations, um, sales training, soft skills, anything like that. And it's really, really branching. You can make it a linear game, but you can also make it, you know, extremely branching. And with all our games, you can load in different media types, video, um, still images, audio files, and even animation. Um, and one thing I'll mention is that, you know, if, as with all these games, the tool is meant to be something that you and your team can do yourselves. However, the game agency does provide additional game services beyond the subscription cost. So if you ever needed help building the games, maybe you're, you, know, you have a small team and don't have the bandwidth to do it yourself, we can help you build them. Um, maybe you want us to help you create the content that you're gonna put in the game. We can do some instructional design. We can write scripts for you. We can hire actors to play the parts of the, um, the, you know, the people who are gonna be um, you know, part of your content. We can do the video editing. We can do an animated series. So just, just know that we're there for you to do additional services beyond what the, the tool does. Um, so scenarios we talked about. I'm going to go to Jump real quick. So Jump is a great game. It's probably one of our, our most popular. It's also a really gamey game. So in this case, you are playing as a character that jumps from platform to platform. And when you land on a platform with a question mark, that's where your content gets served up. So the goal is to get as many questions right as possible. You're trying to avoid things falling on your head. You're trying to avoid falling off the platforms. But really the goal is to continue to get questions right. And it's really an endless jumper game because the more questions you get right, the more lives you get. And therefore, you know, the, the experience just keeps going and going. 
Match is very similar to um, a, a Bejeweled or Candy Crush, probably one of the most popular game mechanics out there today. The way that our game works though is that you're asked questions before the game begins. And depending on how well you answer those, you're gonna earn special power-ups and boosts. So once the game begins and you have to start matching tiles, if you're having trouble finding matches, you can use your boost to help you kind of bust up the board faster. There's also question bubbles that will pop up in game. So you'll be able to at, answer more questions and it'll pause the play while you answer and then go back to the play. Um, one other thing I'll mention is in all of our games, there are different question types. So we, we went over Jeopardy, there's text input and multiple choice, but in our other games, um, almost all the other games except for Scramble, there are five different question types. So you've got either multiple choice, Multi-select lets you pick more than one answer. Image match lets you load images in for your answer options, text input, and then polling. So if you ever want to use a poll question inside of a game, maybe at the end of a game you ask a couple poll questions, or perhaps you make an entire game that's a survey or a poll, you can do that as well with our platform. Trivia is the next one I want to mention. And while we know there's tons of other trivia games out there, we've made ours to have a lot of really fun bells and whistles. So there's, um, there's streaks and there's timers. Obviously, you're collecting points. There's the five different question types and all the different media elements that you can add in. Scramble, as I mentioned, um, is kind of like Wheel of Fortune without the wheel. There's two question types you can create. One is a uh, a sentence scramble where they have to unscramble the entire sentence to get the answer and the other is a word scramble where there's a sentence that's missing a word and they have to unscramble that. I've seen this work really great in a group environment where um, you know maybe everyone's sitting at tables and there's one device, someone's controlling the device but the group is working together to answer those questions. But of course it can be a, a singular experience as well. And then the last two are recall and sort it. So Recall is a visual learning game. This is a game where you would be watching a video or looking at an image and then it disappears. And the goal is that you're challenged to recall what you saw. So you can ask as many questions as you want about the image that you saw. And if you have to look back at it, you can do a little cheat and go back and you know, kind of take a peek again. But the goal here is really, you know, the game is meant for memorization, identification, step-by-step -step processes. Maybe you do a, you know, a video like what's missing, um, et cetera. And then sorted is, is really a grid. So you have a carousel of content that needs to fit into the grid. This is a three by three grid, but you could do um, a smaller or larger grid as well. And you name your columns and your rows, and then you have to put each piece of content in its specific place in order to complete the grid and then complete round one. And then you can, of course, go, go on to round two and so forth. So those are the eight game types. One of the things that we love to do at the game agency is really help our audience map the right games to the right objectives. So whether it's a performance objective, maybe it's a certain kind of learning environment, maybe it's you know ILT versus um, e-learning, or maybe it's a different kind of learner. You may have an, uh, you know, an older audience versus a millennial, so certain games may map better. And then the last piece is your content, of course, and your goal. So if you're trying to map to something that's like a soft skills training, then maybe tr uh, scenarios is a great game for you. So there's a lot of ways that we can help. I'm gonna pop over to pricing because that may be a question that you guys are um, interested in. So the way our platform works is it's subscription-based. You pay for a year, and you can decide how many games you want. We break our pricing up into two areas. We have standard and enterprise. The difference really is in the number of unique players across the, the first year, the, the one year. So um, under standard, if you have a learning audience that's 2,500 players or less, then you can go with one of these options. One game is $14.99. Another game, you know, the, eight, the whole eight pack is $59.99. By the way, we do have another game coming out in the next couple of months, and the goal is that we're gonna to continue to release more games. Um, uh, one thing I'll mention about this is that if you buy one game or you buy the eight pack, you're not stuck with just building one game. You can make as many versions of those games as you want throughout the year for all different kinds of purposes. Um, each game also comes, or each subscription also comes with one admin. So we define an admin as somebody who can log in and use the platform. Um, we also have people called creators, which are essentially the same thing as admins, except a creator is someone who can build games and only see or edit the games that they make, whereas an admin can see everybody's games within their platform. So if you're a small team and you only have you know, maybe one or two people on this platform, you can make them all admins. But we have some clients that have um, you know, are global and have different departments using the platform and for whatever reason they don't want to have their different game builders share. So they can just kind of designate those people as either an admin or a creator. And lastly, we have another user called a uh, viewer. 
and a viewer is someone who can log in and see data. They won't be able to, to um, build games or edit games, but they can see data for different games. And they can also be facilitators of meetings. So you don't have to pay for an additional seat at $4.99 for a, a meeting facilitator. They can go in and run the instructor controls of the games um, as needed. If you do, however, want more than one, they're $4.99 each. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you is that, you know, with any of these plans, um, everything comes in it. So there are 16 different languages. So, you know, um, if you have a global business and you need people in different countries to play the games in different languages, I'm happy to show you our translation tool. It's really nifty. Um, as I mentioned, it's SCORM compliant. We also are XAPI ready if that's interesting for anybody. Um, there's also the ability for single sign-on if you need it to create authorized player lists, et cetera. Um, and on the enterprise, if you have a learning audience that's bigger than 2,500, what we've done is we've really just doubled the cost to go unlimited. So even if you have 50,000 or 100,000 or more players, you're only paying double to go unlimited for that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead now and ask Steven or Jen to unmute yourself if there are any questions that I've missed in the chat for things that people want me to cover since we are at about uh, 41 minutes into the webinar? Steven or Jen? So far, sorry, this is Steven. So far you've covered um, all the questions that have been coming up. Great. Uh, yeah, uh, I, think, I think you're good so far. Okay, perfect. Thanks, guys. All right, so then while we're at, while we're at it, um, uh, we can certainly end the webinar early, but one thing I wanted to do before we do that is to, to share a little bit about the game agency because I didn't get a chance to do that before. Um, the game agency has been around since 2007, and prior to the Training Arcade launching, 100% of our business has always been creating custom game solutions. So we can build out any kind of game solution you can imagine from a simulation to a game-based training app, educational games, um, the managing partners of our business all come from Atari and other game um, publishing companies. So we really take a game view first. Gaming's really obviously in our DNA. And then once we decide that, we've, that we're going to create something that's going to be really fun and engaging, we make sure obviously that the learning is super effective. So the reason why we built the Trading Arcade is because, you know, game development tends to be quite expensive. And over the years, talking to clients, we never wanted to say no to somebody who didn't have a large budget. So we built the Training Arcade to be a really affordable option and a do-it-yourself tool. You know, you really do not need us to, to help you build these games. Of course, we're here to support. Um, they, it's a, you know, a cost-effective platform. Um, you can build the games relatively fast. And um, there's a lot of flexibility, as I mentioned before, about you know, how you can go ahead and um, you know, parse those games out to your audience. But if you ever do need, um, have ideas for custom games that you're looking for, we are certainly happy to send you examples of things that we have done. Um, we are proud that we're an award-winning company with our custom games. If anyone was at DevLearn two weeks ago, um, we're really excited that we took home the Best of Show Award on an early lit project that we built teaching um, preschoolers and kindergartners how to uh, read and spell using games. So just a little plug there if you guys ever need some custom assistance. Um, other things I'll mention are that if there is a language missing in the training arcade that you need, we're certainly happy to um, you know, talk about adding new languages for you. Hopefully most of the big ones are covered there, but we certainly can do that. And really the last thought I'll just leave you with is that you know, if you haven't used games before or you're, you know, you've only started using them, um, you know, Games really do provide that extra layer of fun and engagement that's going to hopefully really, you know, spike your, uh, the productivity of your learners because they're, you know, they're having fun, they're spending more time with your content, they're boosting their knowledge retention, and it's a really great complement to what you're currently doing. You know, we certainly don't think that you should stop what you're doing and just use games, but games can really add a nice, um, you know, extra element to it. Um, the last thing I'll say is, is again, anybody who wants to go to, uh, you know, sign up for a free trial of the Training Arcade, just go to our website, click on Try It Free. You don't need a credit card to sign up. And um, if you want a separate demo with your uh, team, certainly reach out, and we will be sending the recording to everybody. So unless uh, Stephen or Jen tell me that there's anything else to cover, I think we're going to end this early, everybody.
All right. Well, I appreciate everyone's time today. Thank you so much for coming on, learning more about the training arcade, uh, learning about the Jeopardy game and what else we can offer. And I hope everybody has a great rest of your day. Thanks so much, everybody.